In this video, I'll be taking a look at an ND array object. We considered this computer program in the last video in the playlist, and here you can see the runtime appearing. This creates a Python list, whereas this creates a NumPy array. Now, if you are unsure with respect to the execution of this program and how the output is produced, I recommend before you go on listening to this video, you locate the previous video in the playlist and listen to that first. To quickly summarize the execution of the program, we will refer to this program statement, which you can see is printing my list here, and this will print the type of the list here. And you can see the type of the list is indeed list. This program statement will output the NumPy array here, and this will output the type of the NumPy array here. And you can see it is a class, and the name of the class is shown here. Let's focus on the output from the program, and we will have a look at this word here, NumPy, and what it actually means. Well, this is the word you can see in a larger font, and this stands for numerical, and this stands for Python. So this is the NumPy module that we imported at the beginning of the program that I've showed you in this video and the previous video. And the name of the module comes from numerical Python. Let's now consider this word here. And I'll make it a bigger font. And this N stands for number. This stands for dimensional. And clearly, this stands for array. Take a closer look at this and you can see we have dot notation. Now that is telling us that this, which is a class, is a class that was defined in this module. So if I wish to use this class, I have to import this module, which I have done at the beginning of the program that you've seen in this video and the previous one in this playlist. So just to summarize, this is a class and it's a class that's defined in this module. Now I'm able to use this class, which is part of the NumPy module, because you can see if you look at the program, I've imported NumPy on this line. Now consider this line of code that I've extracted from the program we're concerned with in this video. And you can see I'm creating a Python list. Now I can produce a schematic diagram which helps me think about the structure of a list. And it would look something like this here. You can see it's got the name my list and it's got the content as you would expect from here. And it has the index from 0 through to 4. If you now consider this line of code, which is responsible for producing a NumPy array, what it will produce is this, which you can see has this name, it has the contents 1 through to 7, and this is the index. Now, if you consider both the diagrams, you may be forgiven, well look, they're the same structure, but they're not, because what we have to remember and what we have to realise is that the class list was responsible for producing this. So what I'm highlighting with the arrow is an object of the class list. Whereas if we consider the other diagram, it is based on the ND array class. So what I'm highlighting is indeed an object of the ND array class. In other words, it's an instance of the ND array class. So although diagrammatically they look similar, we have to bear in mind that they're based on different classes. In other words, they're different types of objects. Now this is important to appreciate because we will find that the attributes and the behaviors associated with the ND D array are much richer when it comes to performing mathematical operations on the data within an ND array than it is with a Python list that has, by comparison, a limited number of methods that you can apply to the list when compared to the ND array. This program statement has been taken from the program we've been concerned with 
if we consider what happens when this executes, we're going to get an ND array, as you can see here. You can see the contents, the index, and the name. If we home in on this and ask the question, what is it? Well, it is an instance of the ND array class. In other words, it is an object, and it is an object that has a type, and the type is ND array. And the definition of the ND array class is within the NumPy module. So when this line executes, we have to be clear that we got an object, and the object is of type ND array, which means it's been based on the ND array class, which is a class defined in the NumPy module. Before I end this video, I thought I'd introduce you to this, which is taken from the web. Somebody's made an attempt at a formal definition of an ND array. It says an ND array is a fixed size, multi-dimensional container of items of the same type and size. Now, what I would like you to take from this is an ND array is a container, and it contains items. Now, what are these items? Well, they're data. They will be a data set. So an ND array can hold lots of data and can manipulate this data efficiently. What you've seen in this video is one type of an ND array. The clue is in this name here, multi-dimensional. There are zero-dimensional ND arrays, one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional. I haven't shown you all of those in this video. I've just introduced you to one of the simpler types of ND arrays you can have. I'll be covering the other dimensions later. So N stands for number, D stands for dimensional, and array stands for array. It's given this name because we can have the array having many dimensions, as I've just outlined. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.